Christian to go convert or kill him. But what they did do is they made Christians into a subject people, second class citizens, with less rights, and pressured them in every side to make their life unbearable. They, they did more than that. They, they, they restricted our religion. They stopped us from practicing our religion fully. They stopped us from doing our processions. They stopped us from evangelizing. They said that we couldn't ring bells. They told us that no new churches could be built in cities. They had to be built outside of the cities. They said we couldn't repair our churches unless we got permission from the caliph. Can you imagine the leader listening to all these requests to repair buildings when he's fighting wars all over the place? So lots of Christian buildings didn't get repaired. There were regular anti-Christian pogroms. There was uh, constant pressure upon Christians. Christians were martyred. Christians were taken into slavery. Laws were passed that meant that when a Christian was killed, the blood money that had to be paid was half that of a Muslim. Our entrances to our churches couldn't be on the main high street. Muslims could own slaves, but Christ Muslims could own Christian slaves. Christians couldn't own Muslim slaves. Muslim men could marry Christian women, but Christian men couldn't marry Muslim women. If if and, and this is just these are just off the top of my head. It was an apartheid system. It was an apartheid system, but it was based on religion. What what I what I, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I would encourage you to do is to study the mar just just Google martyrs who died under Islam. Just Google, just Google a Syrian genocide. Just Google Armenian genocide. Just Google Cop just just Google persecution of the Coptic Church. Just Google. <laughs> What a lie! What an utter lie! In Egypt there are regular anti-Christian pogroms. A pogrom, you know what a pogrom is? It's a riot, an, an, like an anti-Jewish pogrom, which is what Christians sadly used to do in the medieval period, where, we, where you riot against a certain group of people. Imagine if there was an anti-Muslim pogrom today in Britain. Yeah? Well, today, this year, next, last year, the year before, there's been anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt, anti-Christian pogroms in Pakistan. When they tell you that Christian and Muslims are living in peace together, they're lying through their back teeth. I know that much, I just haven't studied it. Go and look up, go and look up the fight of the Christians in South Sudan. Yeah. And a lot of it is happening because of the Muslim majorities. So, so don't be bought into their lies. They, they rely. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they rely on the fact. They, these are the things that the Dawatim rely on. They rely on political correctness to disarm everyone. I know you're not. I'm not saying you are. But what, what, what I'm saying is, they rely on political correctness to disarm everyone. They rely on ignorance. Yeah? Those two things are the Dawah team's friend. Ignorance and political correctness. Once those two things are stripped away, the narrative that the Muslims try to push here in the park just falls away. Yeah? So go and look up those things. I'll say them again. Coptic Church, persecution of the Coptic Church, persecution of the church in Pakistan. Go and look up uh, the Assyrian genocide. Go and look up the Armenian genocide. Go and look up the word Dimitri. It's, it's the subject, subjugated position that we Christians find ourselves when Sharia law dominates. And Sharia law is an apartheid system that is imposed upon Christians when Muslims rule. So we've just got to counter their narrative. Anyway, I'm going to go and get a drink now because I'm freezing cold and I'm tired. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for talking to me. Hi.